Hello everyone, welcome back to my very first series, <clears throat> I'm sorry, welcome to the very first episode of my creepy podcast series. Uh, unfortunately, the first three episodes of this series will be audio only, uh, mostly because I don't really have any guests, so I kind of want to start doing film podcasts for the series when I have guests and more people, so there's, uh, there's that, uh, but this is called My Creepy Podcast, we're going to be talking about everything creepy here, this episode is episode one, we're going to be talking about spirits, different stories, experiences, and I'll even throw in some of my own, this is my second time filming this, or recording this, <clears throat> so, you know, the other one got fucked up in the audio, so I have to redo it. So here we go. So the first thing I want, the first experience I'm going to be telling you about is when I got in contact with a spirit when I was living at my grandmother's for a while. It all started when I was, in 2015. I was 15 years old, and obviously I wasn't really doing anything. But here's what happened. So. We were staying at my grandma's for a while, and I was in the room that used to be the girls' room, but is now, at the time, it was converted into my room. I was sleeping on a cot. The AC was off, the because the central AC was fucked up, so it didn't work. The only AC we had was a small little AC in my grandmother's window in the living room. Uh, my cousin Michael and David were out back. My mom was at the store. My grandmother was at the store. We were the only ones there. Uh, my dog was outside, and I was the only one in that room. Keep in mind, the window was also sealed shut, um, so it wasn't the wind either. And my bedroom door was closed, and there's no way no breeze did this, especially when I continue the story. So I was playing Call of Duty, and over to my left, there is a bookshelf, and it's full of books. Now, one of the books in there was my cousin Michael's book, the Pink, the Pink Panther book. Y'all remember the Pink Panther, right? Well, anyways, so he was, uh, he had this book, and it was fully in there. It wasn't leaning on anything. It was all the way in there. It was legit in the row that was inserted in The only way you can get this thing out is to reach in and pull it out. So, I was sitting there playing Call of Duty, just enjoying myself, and... All of a sudden, that book flies across the room. And I'm not talking about it fell or it was vibrated out. I'm talking about this thing flew across the room. I thought my cousin Michael or Gabe was pranking me. Looked under both beds and wasn't there. I looked behind the dresser, he wasn't there. I looked behind the door, he wasn't there, even though the door was closed. I looked in the closet, he wasn't there. I looked all over that room, not one person was in there. Right, like I said, there was no wind or AC, so that wasn't the answer. I was really, really, really freaked out. Especially when when I was younger, uh, my grandmother would always tell us that there's ghosts in the attic. There was a man, a woman, their children, and their dog. And I, I believed it for a while, but when I got older, I kind of thought that was just her way of keeping us out of the attic. But there was some creepy experiences there. I remember that and a couple other ones we'll get into later and all I did was pick up the book and put it back and then nothing else happened for a while. Moving on, another experience I had was I was, oh, well this is the first uh, around the time I just moved here, I think it was like a, a year ago maybe, I think so. And so this happened a year ago. Uh, I was in the kitchen cooking some tacos and my dog Zombie was sitting right in between the wall and the bar of the entrance of the kitchen. And I was the only one in the house. The AC was uh, off because it has this timer on it. So there's no AC. The windows and doors were closed. And the only other person in the house was Zombie or and Daisy. When Daisy tries to speak to you, she goes... But what I heard was not that. So I'm cooking, and as I'm cooking, you know, I, my girlfriend calls, so I start talking to her, and, you know, she says, hey, I'll be right back, right? 
all of a sudden I hear this loud demonic growl. It was like a mixture of demonic growls and uh, static. And, uh, sorry. Uh, and uh, as soon as I hear that, uh, you know, I talked about it on my shorts before. Unfortunately, I wasn't recording anything, so I didn't catch it. Although I wish I did. I thought it was just me. And when it happened, you know, my girlfriend just so happened to, like, get on her bed. She's like, whoa, what the fuck was that? Even my dog, Zombie, was freaked out. And so I look over and, you know, I think, oh, maybe my TV's on. So, you know, I go up the hallway. Uh, TV's off. My mom's TV's off. My sister's TV's off. And there's no other TVs in the house. So, okay. It wasn't my phone. It wasn't the TV. So I, I look at Daisy, uh, the, my, the pit bull that was in there with my dog. Uh, and she's freaked out, too. Now, if it was Daisy who growled, uh, it wouldn't have sounded like it did. And she wouldn't have been freaking out. I mean, this thing sounded like a demonic growl mixed with TV static. So I don't know what that was. So my girlfriend was freaked out, but I just used my banishing enchantment that I wrote. Uh, it's like a it's like a spell that banishes negative spirits. So after that, I didn't really hear anything. Fast forward a few, I think it was like a year later. Uh, this was in like 2020, and I had sleep paralysis three times in one night. Okay, so. Uh, I was sleeping one day, and my theory for sleep paralysis, because, you know, everybody talks about how they see these creepy things, so I thought, you know, maybe if I, you know, faced the wall, I wouldn't see anything and nothing would happen. I was wrong. I was sitting there sleeping, and, you know, I wake up, and I'm still facing the wall, and I'm like, oh, I gotta use the bathroom, you know, so I try to get up, but the f I couldn't move. It was like my whole body is made out of iron, and my bed was one of those magnets that they use to move cars, you know, so I was stuck. So I tried to yell out my mom for help, thinking somebody glued me to my bed for some reason, but I couldn't speak. And I was like, what the fuck's going on? What the fuck? I couldn't move, I couldn't speak, in my head I'm freaking out. And all the while, I hear these demonic whispering, something like that. And it was somehow far away and up close to my ear at the same time. Okay. About like a minute of this, I wake up. I'm like, what the fuck? So I said, you know what? It was probably just a one-time deal. Went to sleep. It happened again. So I wake up after about a minute. So I get up again. I'm like, okay, it happened twice. There's no way it's going to happen again. Go to sleep. It happened again. So I said, fuck it. And I just stayed up watching The Simpsons after that. Woke up, and uh, around dawn, I crashed. So, that time, luckily, no sleep paralysis. And that was pretty creepy, you know? It was, it was really fucking creepy. You know, a lot of people might say it's just hallucinations, but you don't know how creepy it is until it actually happens to you. Uh, you know, I was... What? <laughs> Three times in one night. I can't even imagine... How many of you are confused and stared for me? Fuck. Um, yeah. And nothing really happened for a few months after that. And then I had this really creepy dream. Uh, and I dug into some folklore. And I'm pretty sure a trickster spirit visited me. Because uh, in my dream, I was, in the, I was in the doctor's office. I just got called into the, to the room and you know I'm sitting here uh, my mom's sitting in the chair in the corner playing on her phone and I'm laying on that weird bed with the paper on it that one that always is some, somehow the paper's always ripped uh, so I'm sitting there laying down and you know I asked my mom in my dream hey when the doctor's coming and she's oh he's coming right now so the doctor walks in and tells me we have a problem and we need to we need to do something I said what's wrong and he says something to my mom that I couldn't hear and then when I blinked in my dream, the entire room turned into some dim, gritty, dark, like barely lit, scary, demonic room. Something you think you would find on a horror movie. So I'm like, what the fuck? And then I looked down and the bed turned into a cot. And then after that, the doctor was like, oh, there's evil. And I said, where's the evil? And he said, in you. And then it turned 
and he took these little metal bars, the square metal bars, and made an X. Not a cross, an X. I don't know what the X meant, but whatever. And, uh, so, <laughs> uh, after that, you know, the doctor made it, decided, hey, I'm going to make it even more creepy and turn into the, the uh, god of death. So, I'm like, huh? And then I wake up. Safe to say I didn't get any sleep that night, because I... Because, uh, you know, I chopped it up to just being a weird dream at first. But when I looked at my phone, it was 3 a.m. What? That's pretty creepy. Um, moving on from my personal experiences, I want to do a couple other things. Um, so, how about we get to, uh, moving on. Uh, I want to go down the different, uh, sections of spirits. So, first we're going to talk about... First, I'm going to mention the good spirits. So, good or friendly spirits are the ones that are people of the dead who typically uh, are nice to people. For instance, uh, I think this is in Florida. Um, in Florida, there is something called the Gray Man. And he is a spirit. And they say that if you... He stays at this kind of beach-like area. It's like a lake or something. And it says in the legends that... He was once a man who was at the lake, and a terrible storm came, and he was struck by lightning and then died. And his spirit, ever since then, he would sit and wander that beach, and if someone were to walk up and talk to him, he would introduce himself and then disappear. And it's said that if you shake his hand before he disappears, or even encounter him to begin with, and he will legit save your house from a disaster so say a storm comes in he will protect your house from damages now let's move on malicious spirits aka evil spirits those are the kinds you don't want to be encountered with now those uh those are spirits that are all that are sometimes ghosts demons either one uh banshees are another one but we'll get on to that later uh, these malicious spirits have just love to torture people. They love to torture. It's their jam. And there are two forms they usually take. Maybe they'll take the form of a creepy clown to gain fear. Other times they will present themselves as maybe a little girl to gain sympathy. And either way, they kill you. Sometimes when these malicious spirits possess you, they don't happen right away. At first it'll seem like you have superpowers. But over time, it will progress into stuff like this. Um, for instance, the the uh, what is it called? The there's this movie I forgot what it's called. It's based on a true story about this guy who went fucking crazy and slashed his whole family, and then was later arrested. He claims he doesn't remember anything, and some people theorize that he was possessed by an evil spirit. Moving on, trickster spirits. Trickster spirits. Um, love to mess with people. Not necessarily endangering them, but at the same time pissing them off. So trickster spirits usually like to scare you, but not really endangering you. So it ranges from, oh shit, this, guy, this spirit hid my keys. All the way to like, I'll haunt you, uh, it'll go in your dreams and scare you. Uh... Some trickster spirits even go so far as to mimic a uh, loved one's voice and say, Hey, hey, uh, Timmy, come in here. And you're like, okay, mom. So you walk up there and your mom's not there. And she's actually downstairs cooking. Trickster spirit. Moving on from that, we have the shadow person. I've talked about them on my channel before, and so has a lot of other YouTubers. The shadow people are kind of like ghosts, and they are spirits, but... They're just a black silhouette of a person, pretty much like a living shadow. So, a lot of them just have the silhouette. They usually have red eyes, and some of them are good, and others are bad. But the one you don't want to mess with the most is the hat man, or the man with the hat. Usually, this, this shadow person takes the form of, uh, just like any other silhouette uh, shadow person, but he has a hat and they think that he's the boss of all the shadow people so it's pretty interesting and sometimes they'll just lean over these spirits will walk up to you 
Sometimes they'll just stalk you, but sometimes they'll hop up on your chest and stare at you, holding your chest down so where it's hard to breathe. And that's when the night hag comes along, and it's a form of shadow person, which, again, spirit. So, there's that. Moving forward, we're going to talk about another spirit, a banshee. Banshees are usually seen as women who are kind of like made out of a light, smoky type thing. They have no legs, and they're usually women who are in long white dresses, and they fly, and what they do is they screech. They have these loud screeches, these deafening screeches, and they say, if you hear it, you or someone you know will die. And other times, these spirits will, uh, they will scream so loud that you'll crack your skull open and then they'll feast on you. On your brain, probably. Either that or your soul. Um, but, I mean, there are two different types of banshees. The malicious, the malicious ones, and the ones that will not really mess with you as long as you don't mess with them. Um, but there are types of them that'll fuck with you just because they're hungry. So, and yeah, that's pretty much all I can say right now. I could go into more details about each category, but um, I really don't want to. So moving on, there have been tons and tons and tons of experiences with other ones. So uh, we're gonna talk about one Japanese uh, spirit, urban legend, the slit mouth woman. Uh, in Japan. It's not really uncommon to see people wearing surgical masks even way before COVID because in Asia there's a lot more people so diseases are easily transmittable so they wear masks. And uh, this spirit text is going back way back in the day. Uh, there was this the slip mouth woman, I can't pronounce her name so I don't want to butcher it, but she had a husband. Her husband uh, knew she was cheating on him or something. So she ta he takes out his katana and slits a permanent smile in her face. So she walks around the uh, streets of Japan. And if you're walking around at night by yourself, a woman in a mask will walk up to you. She'll say, hey, do I look pretty? And if you say no, she kills you. If you say yes, she'll remove her mask. And of course... If you ask you the same question, you say no, she chops you in half. If you say yes, she gives you the same smile she's got. They say uh, you can get away by just running, but when you do that, uh, she'll just look at you when you look back, and then when you're sleeping, she'll kill you. Also, uh, a lot of people say throwing fruit in her face and running is a good way, but then again, she will still kill you. Uh... Another theory you can do is say is confuse her, and if you confuse her and run off, she won't be able to get to you by saying by you saying you're about average, you know you're you're alright, and she'll be confused and you know run off. Uh, yeah. So there have been tons and tons of. Th a lot of people um want to say hey you know, all this is bullshit, but. A lot of those people don't really do the research, and of course, they don't believe it. But then again, they have just as much proof as we do. We don't really have that much proof that they exist, but then again, uh, the people who say ghosts and spirits are bullshit, they have just as much proof as we do. They have nothing to prove that they're fake. So, And I'm going to say something that makes a lot of sense. So Einstein always said that energy cannot just disappear. You know, it has to go somewhere, right? Well, I think it was Einstein who said that. Well, your spirit is 100% energy. So, it only makes sense that your spirit won't just... Your, your spirit, your fucking consciousness can't just disappear. You know, it can't just poof, disappear. It has to go somewhere. That's, that's the reason why I believe in the afterlife. Uh, for anybody who didn't know, I am a Welsh Celtic pagan. Uh, I'm a witch. So, I believe in this stuff a lot. Uh, one of the things uh, you can contact with, a lot of people assume you have to have a Ouija board. You do not. You can just have a candle, and that's all you need. Uh, that and a picture. It could be digital or a person, doesn't matter. As long as you can memorize that person and visualize them, you are set. So, what have we learned here tonight? 
there are tons of spirits, tons of ways to uh, contact them, and etc. So what happens other times? Well, let's get into some stories about other people who encountered spirits. Uh, there was this one story I know about. So, I remember uh, watching this video. Uh, there was a security cam footage, which I've shown on my channel before, of a hall, I think it was like a high school hallway. And uh, some people in my comments are like, yeah, that's just a wind blowing it. But here's the thing. These fucking... Uh, file cabinets, they're about mm, five feet tall, I think, and I used to have one of these in my old house. These things weighed like 40 pounds, okay? The AC was probably on, but the windows, on the other hand, were definitely closed. So, uh, to say it was a light breeze is bullshit, because how can a light breeze or the AC move a 40-pound uh, uh, file cabinet? You know, I don't understand. How could you say that when it's 40 pounds? The only wind that would be able to move a 40-pound uh, file cabinet would be like like a storm or something. And in the video, there's no storms, okay? There's no wind uh, that was constantly blowing the windows open shit. There's no debris flying everywhere. There's nothing. It was literally nothing, so... And on top of that, the whole file cabinet was doing this. Ba-boom, ba-boom, rocking back and forth. And the doors to, like, the room, like, way in the back were also opening and closing, so, uh, <laughs> yeah. And, uh, again, people are going to be like, oh, it's just a wind or, you know, whatever, vibrations or some shit from a tractor. Really? You're going to say that? You do know that most schools, uh, most high schools after 2015 literally have these uh these design doors to keep people from breaking in so during the daytime uh they would unlock the front door and if you have the key you can easily unlock it but if you don't have that key and you try to push those doors they don't use those chains no more they used to back in the day but they don't do that no more they literally have these systems where if you do not have a key to open that door it will lock in place it will like lock the only way in is to either have a key, and only the principals have keys, and the assistant principal does too, but the teachers, the janitors, they all have these little weird card things, the IDs, and then they swipe, and then there you go. But, uh, almost like a jail, but not really, uh, but they have those. So to say a wind did that would be retarded. Uh, also, even if the lock was faulty, I highly doubt a light breeze could open those doors because those doors were still way too heavy to be opened. Uh, these weren't wooden doors. These were like fucking uh, steel reinforced iron or no iron reinforced steel doors or some shit like that. These were metal doors that weighed a ton. So well, at least compared to the wind, they do. Uh, not to an actual person, but yeah. And before you say a person could have opened it, like I said, that. It was like this wasn't during hours of, of studying. This was nighttime. And even if it was a janitor, when the doors opened, there was no one there. And if it was a janitor, why would he open the door and not walk in? Like if he was if he was mopping up the floor or she was mopping up the floor, why would they just open the door, let the camera see the door open, and then close it and then not walk in and mop the floor? Why would they do that? They literally get paid to clean. So, no, they're not doing that. That's bullshit. So, but of course, there's going to be some skeptics out there, but like I said, all the skeptics for the paranormal community literally have no proof that ghosts are fake. Just like we have no proof that they're real. We have videos and folklore and shit, but that's about it. They have no proof whatsoever that they're fake, you know? Uh, another... Let's move on from this. Uh, there's some games we can play. Uh, yeah. One game we're going to be talking about. One Man Hide and Seek. Where, uh, I know you've seen it on RMJ Station and shit, but they really are fake channels anyways. But that doesn't mean the game is fake. One Man Hide and Seek, if you don't know, is when you take a doll and you cut the back open, take out the stuffing, and fill it with uncooked rice. Add one of your fingernails or your blood. Sew it up with a red thread, has to be red, and then you take 
it and go to the bath the bathroom or this or yeah the bathroom or you can go into the kitchen sink and fill it with water um, and you put the doll in there and you take a knife and say tag your it tag your it tag your it you walk out of the bathroom go back in and say I found you I found you I found you then say uh, you know whatever and then after that uh, you go back you walk out of the bathroom go back in the doll is gone you just summoned a demon now they say you have to do this from 3 a.m. on the dot and then you gotta make it to 4 a.m. which is a whole hour and these things if they catch you they will kill you and they say if you do it not only will you get bragging rights but you'll also get one year of good luck other people say it gives you a wish but around the first time this was even created which was centuries ago by the way uh... this isn't new and it just said good luck it wasn't no wish although that would be pretty cool to get a wish another game you can play is shit what is it called i totally blanked out for a second guys sorry um, i think it's called the closet game where you go you get your closet right it's got to be like a small closet and you turn all the lights off in your house and you have a candle okay so what you do is you summon the spirit by saying a chant and then you light the candle okay you don't walk out of your closet once you light the candle if it goes out hurry up and light it again use a a lighter or a match you cannot have your phone light you cannot have a flashlight it has to be that candle once you do that you can walk out and apparently when you do that uh, a demonic figure will follow you or something and then if you want to end the game early that one there. oh and speaking of which if you want to end the game early for one man hide and seek you have to have a, uh, a mouthful of salt water and then you spit it at the doll and then it's cancelled don't expect your prize when you cancel it early. Yet again, uh, we know about the Ouija board. We know um, about the candles and shit. What we don't know, uh, a lot of you don't know, is you can also do uh, The Devil's Got My Arms, which is kind of a stupid game anyways. But you go into a um, doorway and you press your arms and then it'll feel like someone's pulling your arms up. I just think, I don't think that's anything to do with the paranormal, I just think that's just your body, you know, doing whatever, so, that's just me. Um, again, one more game we're going to be talking about, the elevator game. We all know about the elevator game, we've all seen it. Now, the goal of this game is to find a elevator, and most elevators don't have a 13th floor, but if you can find one, you're good. You get into the elevator, make sure you're alone. Okay, if you do this with a friend, they have to wait their turn. They cannot do it with you. You have to be alone. When you get in, you're gonna sync with, You're gonna press each floor in a certain way. Once you do this, at a certain point, you're gonna get to a floor and a woman will walk in. Don't talk to her, not one bit. Okay, don't look at her. If she talks to you, just ignore her, because she is not human. Okay, she's not human. Don't fuck with her. Okay, she's gonna, you're gonna hand her, you're gonna hand her something, uh, either, I think it was either a note or a rose or something, I don't know, you hand her something, and then, after that, you walk out. Once you do this the right way, you will enter the first, you know, I think it was like the, uh, the fifth floor, yeah, the fifth floor, the tenth floor, and once you get there, once, w once you get to that floor, you're apparently in another dimension. It looks identical to ours but it's entirely different dimension like for real it's scary uh... and in this dimension there's apparently entities that want to kick your ass <laughs> why anybody wants to play this game i don't know but apparently people are doing it for it. and there's no rules that you can't bring a camera but you know there's that uh, and then once you're done uh... you just sit in the elevator down and then your friend comes up and then you got to do this whole process over again to get back to our dimension. So, there's that. But, yeah. I want to talk about one more thing involving spirits before I end this podcast. Before it gets too long. Um, what exactly can I do to, uh, you know, what are some warnings I can do? 
Well, you can paint your symbols on your house. I would recommend doing it in black light paint so no one sees it because they're going to be creeped out. Uh, salt on your windows. Uh, sage is a good way. Incense is also needed for that. Uh, let's see. Banishing candles. Uh, a lot of things, actually. Um, if you, The more you do, the safer you'll be. Uh, but, you know, that's going to be the end of my podcast. So please like and subscribe to the channel and follow me on everything. Hit that notification bell so you don't miss out on any of my videos. And I will see you guys next time. Goodbye.